Welcome to Dangerous Prototypes. I'm Ian. This week we're going to do part two of our pick and place series. I'm going to show you how to load reels and talk about what values I chose to put in the stack. This is the small $3,500 pick and place machine we picked up in China. It holds 15 reels and has one tray up here for bigger parts. 12 of the 15 reels are 8 millimeters. That's stuff like 0603, 0805, 1206, resistors, capacitors, LEDs, really common stuff. Two of them are 12 millimeters. Those are for bigger things. We're using it for an SMD button. And then there's one large 16 millimeter feeder. Now, if you get the 240 model, there's about twice as many feeder slots. So in populating our stack, our strategy was to put the most common, inexpensive stuff that we're never gonna change at the back. Because it's harder to change a reel in the middle than it is up here at the front. So common stuff goes at the back. That stuff we're never gonna change. Smaller parts, especially tape strips, go up at the front because it's easier to work with them up here. We have a lot of our parts and strips of 100, 500, or 1,000, and that doesn't work in the machine as well as a reel, but it is doable. Now I'm going to show you how to load a reel. The reel capacitors, we're going to put it here in slot number 7. We come in over the first bar, under the second bar. So we went over the first bar, under the second bar, under the belt, and the feeder slot has a spring, so you push down on the feeder slot and slide this through. Pull the cover back up and put it around these spools, which pull it up and keep the parts exposed as the machine feeds. The problem with that, especially if you're using small strips of expensive components, like I've got these 3.3 volt regulators here, or buttons, so you don't necessarily want to waste enough to get it all the way back and mount it in there. So what I've taken to doing is tying a little bit of dental floss to the end of the tape. We'll feed it up until the parts are exposed. Bring the tape back under the drive belt. under the drive belt and under this bar pull it up through the big one and bring it back and lock it down on the little one I've been tying a little knot on the end to help retain it changing reels isn't so bad especially once you have enough film pulled off to easily connect to the spool but tying little knots with dental floss, that's a real pain. It's definitely one area that could use improvement. But the key for my workshop is getting the most common parts on here so that I don't have to change the reels. And that's what I want. I want this machine to put down the 100 LEDs on our badge. I want the machine to put down the 30.1 UF capacitors on some giant development board. I don't want to do that by hand, and I don't want to rummage around in my parts bins to pull stuff out. So we've got the co most common stuff here, and I'll go through that just real quick to let you know what we've currently got stacked. But this will probably change over time, especially as we learn how to use the machine better. But right now, these are our go-to values, and this is what we put in the machine. Like I said before, I tried to put the stuff at the back that uh, I'm least likely to want to change, because the stuff in the middle, more difficult to change than the stuff at the front. The first part I've got in here are 5.4 millimeter surface mount buttons. I haven't quite placed these yet, but it'll be interesting to see how the machine handles the bigger part. Then I've got a raise of four 10K resistors. We're using a lot of these, especially on the bus pirate board. Then next I've got a 10K resistor, then a 2K resistor, then a 10 UF tentalum capacitor, one UF capacitor, 0.1 UF capacitor, 18 PF capacitor for crystals. That's just in a strip, not on a reel. And here we've got yellow LEDs, which is the color we've been using lately with our red PCBs. And then here, a small strip of 3.3 volt voltage regulators. We use these in just about every project. And then finally, these are the ferrite beads that are often used to filter a USB power supply on a board. Those are most of our main parts. That's what I end up pulling out over and over and over when I'm stuffing a new board. So having the machine take care of that and then tossing a few chips on myself, it's going to save me hours of hand placement, especially when you consider the advantages of using a reflow oven over soldering something by hand. That's it for this week. Next week I'll show you how to export placement information from Eagle in just a few mouse clicks and then use that to get the most common components placed on a board. We'll also run that board through a reflow oven and see how it turns out in the end. 
Then coming up soon, we'll have a tour of Switch Science, a manufacturer in Tokyo. Thanks for watching.